County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Committee are proud to present a series of readings of the poems of Thomas Bean. Thomas Bean was a native of Rathangan who died tragically in December of 1922. Interned in the in 1921, he set the task of creating a series of poems based on his surroundings and local history and heroes that he admired. These poems were published after his death in 1922 and serve as a reminder of his struggle and his interest in his locality, his love for Kildare, his love for Ireland. The Poems of Thomas Bean is supported by Kildare County Council's Decade of Commemoration Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012 to 2023 initiative. Local Studies Genealogy and Archives Department in conjunction with County Kildare Federation of Local History Groups present the Poems of Thomas Bean. Thomas Bean, a native of Ratangan, was killed tragically in 1922. The poems had been written during the period of the War of Independence some year and a half earlier. They describe his love for his locality of Ratangan, his love for Ireland and his heroes. My name is Brian McCabe. I'm the acting chairman of the Kildare Federation of History Groups. This project is a recording of poems which were written by uh, a Thomas Behan during the War of Independence. Uh, Thomas Behan was the intelligence officer in the 7th Brigade, 1st Eastern Division of the IRA. The poems were written during his internment in the Rath camp during the War of Independence. Uh, sadly, Thomas himself was killed in 1922, uh, and the poems which he wrote were published in 1923. So as part of the project of reprinting those poems, uh, we decided to have a, a recording of the poems with a nominee from each member of the um, history groups in the Federation. My name is Nessa Dunley from Kilcullen, and I'm a member of the Kilcullen Heritage Group. This poem is dedicated to Terence McSweeney. Terence McSweeney was an Irish playwright, author, and politician. He was Lord Mayor of Cork when he was arrested in 1920 by the British government and was charged with sedition and interred in Brixton Prison. He died there after 74 days on hunger strike at the young age of 41. His last words to a visiting priest, I want you to bear witness that I died as a soldier of the Irish Republic. The name of the poem is called To Terence McSweeney. In Aaron's cause, Thy life began, your parting words, thy will be done. O patriot, O martyred son, how gallant and how brave you bore the cross of Aaron's woe, unmindful of the mighty foe. You are, alas, true friend, laid low, low in an Irish grave. Although we mourn our fallen brave, we grudge not sacrifice to save our land, which thou hast died to save, O dauntless soldier true. But from the gloom that shrouds thy bier, a omen bright arrayed to cheer. And that's why thou hast suffered here and rose to dare and do. But now, true friend, your cares are o'er. The Lord shall guard forevermore you on that bright and blissful shore for all eternity. Where tyrants mighty torture change shall fetter not your limbs in pain, nor e'en to slur your honoured fame, brave champion of the free. Then, Sleep in peace. Your flag arrayed in golden gleams shall be displayed. 
our destined hope, so long delayed, shall foster by its brave. And when triumphant clarion ring of peace and freedom a message bring, we'll kneel in reverence a hymn to sing o'er our martyred hero's grave. My name is Darren Brereton and I'm from Prosperous Heritage Society and I'm going to read Lines to the Blithe and Hoary Fenian by Thomas Bean. Good morning, Con, how are you? Sure tis you that's looking well. In spite of all the hardships, on you they'll never tell. With your cord, your eye and hammer boots, your eyes and face so gay, I think you're growing young when I look at your lovely locks of grey. Well, youth, I'm glad to tell you, I'll soon be 64. And since the days I was 21, I ne'er got such health before. I am proud to wear that felon garb, thank God he ordained it so. And were he pleased to sound my farewell call, in peace to my grave I'd go. When I look back on the Fenian boys and know what they went through, and then look out at the dawning day, I envy a youth like you. Ah, twas they that lit the fires that now burn deep with hope so high. Though girded by Saxon gun and gold, they rose to dare and do. Then came along that gallant band who rose on Easter Day. Sure, fatal was their gallant stand against the tyrant's might array. But from their hallowed stricken tomb, there came their parting song. We gave our lives that you may live to some day right the wrong. The seed, once sown, took root again and spread through every part, in memory of those hero youth and the cause they held at heart. From every hill and every vale, all brave sons of the gale, swelled the ranks of the IRA to have a nation once again. Jim Doyle, Selbridge Historical Society. It's a poem by Thomas Bean about Father Smith. It's called The True Soggard, Father Smith. O oh, dauntless, true and brave, with fearless heart you gave in darkest hours to save our country. You feared not cell or sword, nay, shrouded coffin board to defy a foreign horde for liberty. As the Soggards did of old, you rallied neath the fold, your zealous heart so bold and true. There paused to count the loss, come triumph or holocaust, to regain the freedom lost for Roisin Du. O oh, noble chieftain blessed, your life entwined to distress till omens shroud your breast for long and drear. You love with courage grand the dolors of our land. True priest, brave soldier man, you knew not fear. Then live to reap in truth the harvest of your youth. The bloodful seed took root to die no more. O oh, freedom's cup be thine to o'erflow till end of time. We'll start your life sublime a fairer shore. My name is Barbara Garrity and I'm chairperson of the Curry Local History Group and I'm here today to read uh, one of the poems by Thomas Behan and the name of the poem is Epistle to the Girls of Ireland. O oh, maids, lovely maids of this sorrow dial, your beauty excels everywhere. Your pure modest face and your angelic grace no maidens on earth can compare. Your bold heart so true, no fear ever knew, for chivalry no rival can stand. With the spotless colleen of the emerald green, the maidens of our dear land. In battle's array, in the midst of the fray, to guide and to cheer on the brave, they stood by our side when the battle's ebb tide was surging its roll for the grave. The drear dungeon cell was illumined by our girls, ah, nature near destined a band. Like the true Irish youth, a goddess in truth, the maids of our dear land. O oh, sing ye the praise of those heroine maids who gallantly defended our cause. No nation will die when its fair ones will try with their aid to defeat alien laws. When our history is o'er and our silver-decked shore will entwine a free-born land. As the ocean inbounds, your fame will resound, the maidens of dear Ireland. Hello, my name is Liam O'Keefe, also known as Liam Phelan in Newbridge. 
I am a member of Newbridge History Society and uh, I am going to read The Dawn of Freedom's Day by Thomas Behan. A glimpse of light or the ocean's might is sparkling through the gloom. Its storied blast is sweeping fast o'er our crested isle of tomb. Then round its belt with armoured girt stand firmly for the fray to guard with life our hope, our strife for the dawn of freedom's day. Through every care with sword prepare as the veterans of the fray and strike with might in Aaron's fight for the dawn of freedom's day. When times were young, our flag was wrung by a foreign hostile foe. From its infant age, or history's page was gored by years of woe. Our sires of old, true, staunch and bold, with unconquered hearts did say, till death will try, neat its fold will die for the dawn of freedom's day. Through every care with sword prepare as the veterans of the fray and strike with might in Aaron's fight for the dawn of freedom's day. Then rally beneath its unsullied sheet, be courageous and firmly stand, with hearts entwined round its fold enshrined to die or defend our land. O'er our martyrs' graves, the hillsides and vale, in gold letters will be our essay, until death we were true to our fate and to you for the dawn of freedom's day. Through every care with sword prepare as the veterans of the fray, and strike with might in Aaron's fight for the dawn of freedom's day. My name is Brian McCabe, chairman of the Kill History Group, uh, and this poem is entitled My Calico Shack in Kildare. In the year 21, sure my troubles begun, as nature from sleep was awaking, I woke by the noise of some hulahan boys, thought all demons in hell were escaping. I listened to see what the devil it might be when a crowd rushed the sides and the rear. Shouting, General Skinner, invite you to dinner to a calico shack in Kildare. The leader politely told me to dress quietly, to pack up my kit and make haste. And lest I might bring any brandy or gin, he searched from my boots to my waist. Then off in a hurry, on the back of a lorry, with armour to bring up the rear. Through the fresh morning dew, o'er the country we flew, to a calico shack in Gildare. On arrival, I found, my new home was bound with decorations so varied and strong. Electric lamps and barbed wire in hedgerows like briar, a sentry en route all day long. The guests all assembled, amongst them was mingled the heroes of Kerry and Clare. From Mayo to Navan, from Longford and Cavan, all to dine on the plains of Kildare. The dinner once over, I was told by a soldier that I should be chancy and stay, as here every boy did fully enjoy the wonderful pastimes and play. And so I consented that I'd be contented to stay where this scenery fair combined with protection, disloyal correction, in a calico shack in Kildare where pleasures and gaff were made by the staff, of inventions the latest were seen, the fashions in style there sold by the mile were envied by every colleen. No heart there was chill, all agreed with a will that no place on earth could compare with this curtain roof tent, free from troubles and rent, my calico shack in Kildare. Since then I am here, inside of the wire, where the fads and the fashions are grand, all coats void of reels and brogues without heels, in a hive like a bookmaker stand. While the stars and the moon flash their rays through the gloom, and nature's o'ershadowing glare flashes down through oblivion from their maker in heaven. I am still in my shack in Kildare. 
my name is Leo Conway, and I'm just going to read a little bit of it, my thoughts on Thomas Bean, who is a very good friend of my father, and I'll read my, what I have to say. It has been a great honor to be asked to do this reading this morning, as Tom Bean figured large in my father and my family's lives. Tom was a childhood friend of my father and was responsible for saving him and a brother of moral laverty from drowning in the canal, for which he received an award from the Royal Humane Society and a payment of a pound, which was a lot of money in 1916 when the average weekly wage was five shillings, which for those of us not old enough to remember was a quarter of a pound. In later life, Tom and my father were both involved in the War of Independence. Unfortunately, when the truth came, they took opposite sides. Tom going with the Republican side, and my father joined the Free State Army. This led to a further opportunity for Tom to save my father's life. When my father and some of his colleagues, who were in uniform in a pub near Drogheda, Tom and some of his colleagues, who were in Mufti, also in the pub, his colleagues saw an opportunity to eliminate five Free State soldiers, but were told by Tom that one of those men was his best friend, and if they were to shoot him, they would have to shoot him first, which was typical of the awful situation brought about by the Civil War, which of course eventually led to Tom's own death. The poem I've been given to recite is an elegy by Thomas. In Rathangan churchyard green, inside that fair and ancient shrine, the truest, dearest friends of mine, two brothers side by side, are laid in alumbrous realms to rest smouldering in the silent dust. In youthful bloom, death shroud their breast and call them to abide. With zealous prayers around their silent tomb, the Lord we ask to brighten the gloom that filled our hearts when destiny's doom called you to obey. By guarding your souls in bliss on high, in unity's fold as on earth you lie, where parting pains or wailing sigh near met your golden way. Then rest content, our prayers will be in soothing tones on earth for thee, that in heavenly garb for eternity to dwell on that fair shore, where joys illuminated that mansion great, and pain unknown to your blissful state, our hopes are brightened by faith to meet, to part no more. Margaret O'Shea representing the History Society of Selbridge. Reading The Lassies of Kildare by Thomas Behan. The Lassies of Kildare, we cannot let unnoticed pass the work that has been done by every true good Irish lass, the faithful common amon. We prove the friends, the friends indeed, that we had everywhere. But those more true are friends in need, the lassies of Kildare. They travelled over hill and vale to plead the captive's cause. They strove with us to break the chains and oust the Saxon laws. They asked for comforts for the men deprived of freedom's light and gone to fill a felon's den, the captives of the fight. Though compassed here for many a year by the foeman's devilish art, with all those Colleen's ever dear, has held our cause at heart. Whilst brave men are consigned to fame for honest work they done, we cannot forget the part they played, the faithful Khamanaman. Thus let us drink a toast to those, the patriotic band, 
who stood in danger ever by the soldiers of our land, who in the fight for Ireland have always done their share. May God above protect and love the lassies of Kildare. My name is Mario Corrigan. I'm reading a poem this morning on behalf of Kildare Historical Society, Kildare Town. And the poem is Epistle to Edward Broy, Ballinure, Rathangan. Oh, let me sing a comrade's praise, a comrade brave and true. And let me harp on every praise which lyric strings allow. In justice name to tell the fame of one who feared no sword, but heard the plea of Ireland free and stood to shield her fold. Your Trojan might was in our fight when gloom o'erhung its fate. You illumined our way till freedom's day, true friend of this our state. No bolder son a girt near flung to wield the nation's right and dry the tears of weary years to end a slumbrous night. Ah, soldier true, your heart near knew the guilty haunt of fear. You fearless tread the gory bed and faced its dangers drear. You met with pride the Saxon tide that round you surged its might to end the wail and stricken trail to destine freedom's light. Ah, few did learn your heart was stern to Erin's cause so grand. No praise you sought whilst you have fought to free your fatherland. You still were true to Roisin Dhu and rallied neat her beer, to die or save from mocking knaves the isle you held so dear. Then let us raise the swelling praise of this famed simple youth, bowled rebel broy, the fearless boy, a hero crowned in truth. And all those men who are yet unknown, who answered to the call, what love for Ireland they have shown, a love surpassing all. My name is Paddy Bean. I'm from Nae's Local History Group and I'm uh, reading a poem by Thomas Bean, my native place. On the grand old core of Kildare, where St. Bridget thought and prayed, where the Saxon in the days of old our forefathers betrayed, the noblest sons of Aaron's Isle, the bravest and the best, are gathered in from o'er the land in a cause that's true and best. For loving dear old Ireland, for hating alien laws, for allegiance to their sirland in his just and holy cause. They're herded here like animals to live, to starve and pine by the champions of small nations, Mother England divine. But in spite of all those tortures, the sufferings and the pain, the war-clad Saxon could inflict, Erdan's sons were still the same. I saw them charge with bayonets, I heard them curse and swear, and the very demons out of hell could not equal or compare. But our boys, they never murmured, their hearts were brave and true, to the cause of holy Ireland, to the dear dark Russian do. To talk about those hardships, the world will never know, but were I to live one hundred, in my memory they'll ever grow. The margarine for breakfast, our one potato meal, the leak in tents and bed of straw outside the pointed steel. They watched us through the live long day, they tended us like sheep, they came into our huts at night to wake us from our sleep. To try to tell us of those times, my work would be in vain, to take the brains of Moor or Burns, our sufferings to explain. When we all drudge through muck and sludge, the searches day and night, the bayonet is our daily bread, they show us how they can fight. In their midst they burn the stars and stripes, the flag that heard their call, their awful plea, their dying kick, with their backs against the wall. Through all, our boys kept up their hearts, played their games in good old style. Though youths turned grey and worn, they met all with a smile. And still, while through to the dear old land, in the midst of this hunnish horde, they ne'er forgot devotion to their master and their lord. From history I learn of the mass bush, away in the lonely glen, on mountain slopes, in craggy cliffs, when hunted by Cromwell's men. But the sights I saw in the rat camp will never leave my mind, 
until I am called by the Lord of all to leave this world behind. As each morning brings another day, the church is filled to the door. They kneel outside, one human mass, to muck it is their floor. They prayed to their loved St. Bridget, the patron of the sod, though yet oppressed by Saxon, they knelt in prayer to God. They appeal to Apostle Patrick to once more take our part and plead the cause of Ireland in heaven to the Sacred Heart. They then remember their comrades through who are gone their golden way and ask them to join McSweeney to crave for Freedom's Day. And thus, when the bugle would have six and an urchin would shout from his guns, you bloody ragged Irish sod, get inside your hut. You'd look across Kildare's fair hills and bid Mother Nature good night and know once more within yourself the Saxon laws that might is right. The rosary in hut and tent, a plea to speed the day, when the foreigner will pack his kit that ends another perfect day. When I look out o'er historic Kildare, I think of our martyrs of old, for just outside is the gibbet rat mound where our forefathers lie stiff and cold. Twas there in the dark days of 98, on a word from the Saxon Huns, the men of Wicklow and Kildare, they met and left down their guns. Their arms down, we know the rest, bold Britannia threw to her name, massacred each and every one, another victory to her role of fame. I then look away to fame Mullamast, I think of Tone's lonely grave, how he and Lord Edward and all the rest gave their lives that our land might be saved. I feel proud of their flag unsullied, that we can on history's page hand down to those that are coming a cause that's grown strong in its age. I then look around at the scenery. Allen Hill, it catches my eye. I can see Donnelly's Hollow and the chair of Kildare. They recall history of days gone by. James Fogarty, The Plains of Kildare by Thomas Behan. What I find particularly interesting about this poem is that it transcends history. It goes back to the Celtic times in the midst of Dara Darg and the sorcerer is killing his wife. And of course, it goes through the mid 16th century and the annihilation of the, the leaders of Kildare. And of course, then it brings us into the modern county Kildare that we all love, the country that we all live in and the place that we call home. Give me again a fair summer night between the fading sunbeams and the scented twilight, o'er the hill slopes and braes and the valleys so fair, round the meads and the rills of the plains of Kildare. Let me walk of the scenes of famed Mullock Mast, where the rest of brave heroes of centuries that's past, or waft to tread o'er the ashes of stone, or stray by the gibbets that surround my own home. Your rustic shrines will ever to me be a treasure unknown, a heaven of glee. They stand through all ages, an omen of old, to tell of the brave men who sleep neath your fold. The patriot hearts that are sleeping today, beneath those fair shades in their mother clay, loved your fair silken robes, gave their lives it to save. Now illume your fair plains and smouldering grave. O oh, hope of my youth and dreams of my years, no sorrows e'er pause to wait sullen tears, where the hearts fond and true are frisky and gay and merrily glide all shades of life's way. No attraction on earth will e'er lure me away to my haunts when a boy my hopes every stray, where pleasure streams torrent round a scenery so rare of nature's own garden, the plains of Kildare. My name is James Dorney and I'm here today to read Thomas Bean's poem, Nature's Isle. Give me a land on all this earth, like the little isle that gave me birth. No sons as brave, no hearts as true, at every age to dare and do. Nowhere the smile on every face illumes the hearts to leave its trace, but ever still enjoys it low, where pleasure's love and brooklets flow. Ah, nature in its blended state, designed our land a nation great, arrayed our hills in sombre grand, entwined our glens with silken band. 
and gave us hearts to guard with care such ardent plains and shrines so fair to rout the fierce assailing foe where pleasure's loving brooklets flow. The little songster daily sings sweet lays to make the valley ring. Each bower reflects the realms above, its scented shades a haven of love. O oh, nature's pearl undaunted era, my godly home none can compare. We'll guard till death come joys or woe, where pleasure's love and brooklets flow. Faith we can't keep the rebels in the curl of Kildare.